Hi, my name is Nahid Kazaza and I'd like to welcome you to the Career Exploration Series. Today I have Susan Medwood with me. Susan, we've known each other how long? Probably 10 years. 10 or 15 years almost. Yeah. I think probably more than that. Susan has spent the last 40 years in the field of law. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do today is take you on her journey with her. So, I guess I'd like to start with how you even thought you know, how did you make your decision? Because we have all these students who are asked in high school even, you know, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And, and they don't know. There's no way to know what, you know, what you might enjoy doing. How and when did you make your decision to go into law? To back up a little bit, mm -hmm. I always felt sorry for those people mm -hmm. who knew what they wanted. I mean, how mm -hmm. do you know when you're that young? So I think it should be a combination of skills, what are your strengths, and what's your passion? Mm -hmm. And some way to make a living would always be a good thing. That's for the parents in the audience. Mm -hmm. For me, I came from a working class family. My parents were immigrants. The mm -hmm. good thing about it was we had no money. They had no expectations. And there were no limits. Mm -hmm. They came from Eastern Europe. All they knew was here, this kid can be anything she wants. Mm -hmm. But actually, when I went to college, I was a math major. Mm -hmm. Only because I had no idea what I wanted to be, but all I knew was that was my best subject. So that's a good thing for people to know, that you could still become a lawyer if you're a math major. So you don't well, necessarily anything. have to know what you right. want to major in when you go to college. Absolutely true. Okay, so good to know. So you can, you can do anything, you can change, mm -hmm. which I did. I switched to sociology. And so what and made you decide to, to switch to sociology for math? I mean, so you're, here you are, you're a math major, you're in college, and you chose that just because you were good at it. And so then what happened in your decision making that made you decide to change that? It was frankly the limitations at the time. Okay. I was told as a girl, one of three in the math program, that I was going to be a math teacher. I had no interest in being a teacher. Mm -hmm. Then I was told that uh, that was it. That was my only option. Mm -hmm. Probably if I had been a male at the time, I would have been uh, exposed to things like, well, do you know, do you, how about physics? Mm -hmm. How about industrial design? How about anything else that uses math skills? Mm -hmm. But I really felt like a door had slammed shut. Mm -hmm. I had good verbal skills. I was taking a sociology and a psychology class. I was no, not interested at all in psychology, but I loved sociology. Mm -hmm. And I had good verbal as well as math skills. I learned that because I was really passionate about debate. Mm -hmm. and that started in middle school. So the fact that math door closed meant I started thinking about what else I was good at, what else I would enjoy doing. Okay. And public speaking, which is you know me very well. I happen to be introverted by nature, mm -hmm. but public speaking is something I enjoy. I like the research aspect of it. I like talking to people. Mm -hmm. And so it was a great match, and it's been a wonderful match over 40 years. That's awesome. So you started in math, then the door slammed shut. So that's right. another thing to keep in mind. When one door slams shut, sometimes that can actually be a good thing because it helps you think in a different way and then it, and it opens up right. new opportunities just because you have to be creative in thinking what other options are out there. So in your case, you said, well, I don't like psychology, but I do like sociology and I have good verbal skills, so I'll now switch my major to sociology. So you've switched your major to sociology. Again, in your thinking process, when did the door to law open up or when did the beginning thoughts of doing that open up? I was blessed with a wonderful mentor, I would call her. She mm -hmm. was a professor that I had. I was taking a grad class. I was still an undergrad. I was taking a grad class in cultural anthropology. Mm -hmm. And she sat me down and said, look, honey, because they could call you that then, mm -hmm. you don't want to teach. You don't want to be a social worker. You should go to law school. Mm -hmm. And it triggered a memory that I forgot to bring up, mm -hmm. which is in my last year of high school, my debate coach said, you, sh you would be a good lawyer. Mm. And so like a good girl, I went to my guidance counselor and said, I want to be a lawyer. And he said, this was 1969, girls don't go to law school. Ooh. So when that came up again at the end of my college career, it triggered that memory. And I thought, I can do this. Mm -hmm. it sounds, I knew no lawyers. I really had no idea what they did. Mm -hmm. But it sounded interesting to mm -hmm. me. It sounded like something that would be intellectually engaging and a way to give back to society, and both of those were important to me. That's really good. And the other thing I noticed that you said, it, it, there's this, this thing they call positive prophecy, 
where they ask you to go back and remember when somebody gave you a positive prophecy, which they said you would be good at law, right? So way back in high school or middle school, your debate coach said you would be good at law. And I remember for myself in career coaching, before I even knew what it was, at one of my jobs, someone said, I'm seeing a career coach. You know what? You would be good at that. And I had had several people in my life telling me that I would be good. But these little dots in time, these positive prophecies. So you had a few positive prophecies, and then when a door opened up, you suddenly remembered them, and the chain started coming. So you decided, okay, I'll try law. Mm -hmm. And that's how the whole thing started. That was really it. As I mentioned, there was mm -hmm. no money. Mm -hmm. So I was out for a year working mm -hmm. full time. And I've been working full time since I was 16. Mm -hmm. But uh, working full time also helped me realize I was working in the, in the uh, hospital industry. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I do not want to stay here and in 30 years graduate to the head of Central Supply. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested in going to law school and getting out of that. Oh, good. That's so that's another thing. You don't like. Right. So a lot of times these situations you're in that feel like traps will open doors again because you have to be creative and say, I don't want this, so I need to go th go to this. Okay, great. Well, really, that's, that's a great story on your decision to go into law. Let's take a quick break, and then we're going to ask you the next question. All right. Thank you.